Good afternoon. I am Ipin. I now stand before you as your final obstacle to home sweet home. Right, home sweet home. As of September this year, Raman, please correct me if I'm wrong, 11 persons did not return to home sweet home from work. These 11 persons were killed, falling from height before they went home for the day. For those of us here who do get to go home to our loved ones, I believe that we can do something more to get more people who work at height to go home safely. We all know that fall arrest systems are the last resort in the hierarchy of controls for work at height. And instead of using fall arrest systems, we should design for safety to eliminate working at height. That is definitely the most effective. But any of us here do not use fall arrest systems in our workplaces. As in our workers or clients do not wear harnesses and use lanyards. Can I have a show of hands? Good. Then we are all using fall arrest systems and I still have a job. Now, how many of us here are designers of these fall arrest systems? If yes, please raise your hands. Now, for those of us who did not raise our hands, engineers are not the only designers. Have you ever given instructions to your workers where to hook their lanyards? Yes? Then you are a fall arrest system designer. Or have you ever told your PE, the professional engineer, that you wanted to put a lifeline here or there and gotten the PE to endorse it? Then you are the designer and the PE just does the calculations and maybe tells you what diameter of wire rope to use. Remember, the worker height regulations places the legal duty on the responsible person, that is your company in most cases, to ensure that the forest system is of good construction, sound material and adequate strength, not the PE. So what do we as designers look out for in our design to make sure that it is effective and that it complies with the legal requirements. First, let us look at what is being effective. One definition of effective by the Oxford Dictionary is successful in producing a desired or intended result. By the way, please do not ask me how to read this. I have absolutely no idea. So what is the desired or intended result of a fall arrest system? Let us look at that example. Here, using a crane, we drop an 80 kilogram dummy, wearing a harness with a lanyard attached to the guard rail. This is the photo after the drop. The dummy's fall has been arrested and he's hanging there on his lanyard. Now, do you think this fall arrest system was effective? Raise your hands if you thought this fall arrest system achieved its desired or intended result. For those who raise hands, did you think it was effective because the anchorage guardrail did not break? Was it effective because the dummy was hanging there and did not hit the ground? Or was it effective because the energy absorber deployed? Now, did anyone wonder that if the impact force can bend the scaffold pipe here, what damage it could have done to us if we had been the one hanging there instead of the dummy? The intended purpose of a fall arrest system is to protect the user, but often we have forgotten who is hanging at the end of the lifeline. So instead of checking whether the structure will be damaged, whether the lifeline will break, we should be checking whether the worker is still alive and well, that he is not hanging there, bleeding from the nose and mouth from internal injuries due to the excessive impact forces. The purpose of a fall arrest system is to save the user in the fall and to design an effective fall arrest system is to design it for the user to survive. We can design an anchor that can withstand 10,000 kg force. But if the impact forces to the user is not reduced to something that our human body can tolerate, we are just designing an anchor to hang a dead body. Next. 
any one of us here experienced this before? I did, but not in a toilet. It was on the rooftop of a very tall building. I was going up onto this rooftop to rectify some defects. The project manager told me, Don't worry, we have installed many anchor points on the rooftop. Just hook up and you will be safe. So I went out through this roof hatch here, and sure enough, there were anchor boats mounted onto poles all along the roof edge. There is one conveniently installed beside the hatch. But look at the next one. It was beyond my reach. Not only that, the roof slopes down from the hatch towards the roof edge. If you look at the size of the buildings below, you can see that we were quite high up. To hook up to the anchor, I felt like Jackie Chan doing a stunt in one of his movies. I wonder if the designer has been up there himself. So whether designing a toilet or a floor rest system, the same principle applies. We should be designed to serve the user and for the user to carry out his work safely. It is not as simple as just putting in a couple of anchorages. Well, I did find a use for one of the anchors to hang my water bottle. There are quite a number of residual risks when using four rest systems. We must minimize these residual risks in our design. In this video, there is a horizontal lifeline overhead. It is intended to protect the user in case he falls when he's going up and down and left and right. Let's see whether it is effective. This is an example of not considering the obstructions in the fall path and not ensuring that there is sufficient fall clearance available in the design. Next. This is a typical horizontal lifeline setup commonly used in Singapore. We have a wire rope secured to angle bar post at its ends. Using a weight, we will simulate a fall. You can see that the anchor pole snapped like a matchstick. This is what happens when we fail to consider the dynamic impact forces in our design. Think about it. If we hold a 10 cent coin and accidentally drop it on our feet, it is at most an ouch. But if we were to drop the same 10 cent coin from 10 stories up and it hits someone's head below, it will be much more than ouch. Or it might even be silence and it drops like a sack of potatoes. When we have a free fall, the dynamic loading can be many times higher than the static weight of the user or the dummy. We have just covered some key design parameters. Using a horizontal lifeline as an example in this diagram, these include the first parameter, designing for the user, the maximum arrest force or MAF experienced by the user should be within what the human body can tolerate. Second parameter, the four currents available must be sufficient. We do not want to be hitting something on the way down or like what we saw in the video, even hitting the platform itself. The third parameter, the anchor must be strong enough to withstand the maximum arrest load or MAL that it is subjected to. Not factoring these key parameters into our design can mean that the anchors may snap like a matchstick, like what we saw in the video, and the user falls and hits the ground, or the user can be seriously injured from hitting an obstruction or from internal injuries. In 2012, the Institution of Engineers Singapore IES, commissioned a study to look into the design and calculations of four arrest systems in the industry. So we collected several professional engineer designs, and since Singapore do not yet have a design code, we compared these designs against a design code from the US and Canada. These are the results of two of the samples that we selected. This gray line here 
is what we calculated based on the overseas design code. And you can see that the local calculations are way below this line. It means that the parameters here have been grossly underestimated, mainly because they had not considered the dynamic shock loadings in the fall. This is shocking. It is also very shocking that none of the samples collected considered the maximum arrest force, that is the impact force transmitted to the user. So after a fall, no one knows if the person is hanging alive or dead. So do not assume that if a fall arrest system has some calculations and a PE chop, it is going to be effective and save the person falling on it. No, it is not as simple. But sometimes, it is the simple things that we missed out. Can anyone here spot the mistake in this photograph? Here, we have a mock-up of a horizontal lifeline and a user attached to this shutter that runs along the length of the lifeline with his twin lanyard. Take a good look. Anyone spotted the mistake? Well, it is as simple as not following the manufacturer's usage instructions. Using a big hook here to the smaller shutter ring is an example of what we call incompatible connections. In such a situation, it has been known that the hook can be forced out of the sh smaller shutter ring in a dynamic fall, along with the user to the ground. Now, that wouldn't be our desired result, wouldn't it? In this case, a carabiner type connected would have been more appropriate. It is very common for a forest system to be assembled from various components from different suppliers. For example, the wire rope from the supplier A with the cheapest price, the turnbuckle from supplier B with the more chill sales girl. So for our design to be effective, it is also critical that we read the instructions and specifications of the components that we are using. As Frank Underwood had cautioned, pay attention to the fine print. It is far more important than the selling price. We have looked at what to look out for in an effective design. Now we'll look at the legal compliance. The Worker Height Regulation 11, paragraph 2, requires a forest system to be able to limit the forces applied to the user's body. That is the maximum arrest force that we have talked about earlier. It has to be within what the human body can tolerate. This regulation also requires sufficient fall clearance available so that the user does not hit any obstruction in the fall. We have also talked about this earlier. And this applies to all fall arrest systems. It can be the common linear of energy absorber, or a vertical lifeline with a rope grab, or a horizontal lifeline that we used in our example earlier. By now, you will probably have noticed that these legal requirements are also some of the critical design parameters for an effective forest system that we have been talking about earlier. I believe that the regulators who came out with these legal requirements are working towards the same desired outcome as designers of fall arrest systems. That is, a user who falls while using a fall arrest system that we design will survive the fall with minimum injuries. But Dr. Robert Long, a well-known safety advocate, also said, the real enemy of safety is not non-compliance, but non-thinking. A fall arrest system that fully complies with the legal requirements does not mean it is effective. The legal requirements are just the minimum requirements for an effective design. We have seen earlier that there are other critical design parameters. So to approach legal compliance from another angle, if we think deeper to design around the task and the user, the legal compliance will take care of itself. Now, who said this? I did. I believe that we design a fall arrest system that is effective. We would have complied and gone over and beyond 
the legal requirements for the design of a forward system. All right, four more slides before I end. And I hope that these will be useful tools to help you in designing effective and compliant for arrest systems. The fourth last slide is a simple checklist that summarizes what we have covered. You can use it as a reminder to yourself when designing a for arrest system, or use it when checking through the design by others, maybe by a PE. The third last slide. To help designers to design effective forest systems, Spring Singapore has developed and will be launching a new Singapore standard, Specification for Design of Active Fall Protection Systems, on November 17. Now this standard contains the analytical methods, the equations and design parameters that we have briefly went through earlier. With this Singapore standard, we can either use it as a guide in our own design, or specify this as the reference for your engineer to design to as a contractual requirement when you engage him or her. The second last slide. If you enjoy pressing the scientific calculator, if you still have one, you can find all the technical mumbo jumbo equations and the numbers in this article published in the Singapore Engineer October 2014 issue. Drop me an email if you need the link. And finally, we always save the best for the last. So are you ready for my last slide? Ready? The best is to sign up with Scale for their four arrest system designer course coming up on November 5th to 6th. This course will cover in much more detail what we have just looked at and provide you with not just the equations and calculations, but also a software to help you design or to check the calculation of your engineer. So talk to Ms. Wishian sitting at the back of the auditorium for more details. Unless you prefer our charming Mr. Richard, that I leave it up to you. And thank you. This is the end of my sharing. Have a nice evening. Stay safe and home sweet home.